Hi, my name is Allie Alderson, and I'm a second year here in Spokane. Um, the title of my project is Effective BMI on Vaginal Symptoms in Those Initiating Testosterone for Gender Affirming Therapy. So a little background on this. Um, the population in question is those who are assigned female on their original birth certificate and are planning to start testosterone for gender affirming hormone therapy. Trans and gender minority patients face significant health disparities, discrimination, and inequities um, in the healthcare system, so it's vital to ensure that any study is culturally competent to the greatest extent possible. We have enacted an advisory board of stakeholders and community members um, to advise the research team on language, study design, and overall participant experience to ensure that participants feel seen and respected. I served a significant role in these meetings, um, like creating the meetings, talking to the advisory board members, and enacting the changes that they recommended. So a couple of examples of um, their recommendations. Um, one was changing the label for the population of interest from transmasculine to including a wider array of gender identities, like agender, non-binary, two-spirit, and others. Um, the participants' gender identity could vary widely um, while still meeting criteria for the study, so we wanted to be more inclusive with that language. Um, they also recommended changing the word vaginal to more gender-inclusive language whenever possible um, because it might be really uncomfortable to read the word vaginal over and over and over again when signing the consents, um, so that's something that we changed as well. So overall, the aim of the study is to evaluate the genital microbiome and immune markers on those starting testosterone for gender-affirming care. Um, this will provide insight into the effect of testosterone on genital flora and um, any changes in STI susceptibility. So my sub-investigation examines the relationship between BMI and genital symptoms, um, for example, discharge, itching, and pain. So a little background on the physiology of this. This is because testosterone inhibits endogenous um, production of estrogens, and estrogens are what typically contribute to the health of the genital mucosa, and a lack of estrogens can lead to genital changes, like the symptoms discussed earlier, um, similar to what's seen in postmenopausal women. Um, adipose tissue contains enzymes that aromatize testosterone into estrogens, potentially increasing the amount of circulating estrogens in participants with higher BMI. Um, and increased estrogens may decrease the genital symptoms that participants experience. Um, current guidelines outline that almost everyone experiences these symptoms when starting gender-affirming testosterone, but we're examining, um, you know, how often that really happens. So this is primarily a question generating hypothesis and further investigation may impact the counseling provided to patients um, about the expected side effects of gender affirming testosterone. So this study is still ongoing. Um, it's taking place in Seattle and we just started recruitment. So I'm excited to see um, what happens there. Thank you for your attention.